Jean Lemire, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good, mo good morning. Uh, I, I think I'm a banker, so probably I would be slightly boring uh, addressing questions like uh, sustainability. Uh, sustainability is about environment. It's also, if not more, about social questions and people. And uh, maybe before addressing the question of sustainability from the environmental viewpoint, uh, we should try to look at the world as it is today. And it's not good. And there are questions. And before addressing environment, we should address uh, a few challenges at the background. I'm going to speak mainly about the eastern part of Europe. The BRD is about this. And uh, I would like simply to share with you some views about this region and concerns people have. And people have about the West and about us and about what we do. Uh, there is an economic slowdown in the world. Not good for sustainability. Eastern part of Europe, they do not understand why it comes from the West. And they try not to be hurt by this. And they are not, by the way. Uh, this is a place of sustainability. This is a place where growth remains high. Nobody is immune. Probably there will be uh, some impact. But we don't see it today. And our view is, if there's any, it will be uh, very limited. What is the background? Very high price of oil and gas and food, which is strange. Normally, when you have a slowdown in the macroeconomy, you have a reduction in the prices of oil, gas, and raw material. This is not yet the case. Maybe it will come later, which is good for the region and bad for the region. Some countries are exporters. Some countries are importers. But the main ones, notably Russia, is an exporter of uh, energy and, and uh, raw material. Inflation, picking up. Inflation is key in my presentation. It's clear that uh, inflation is against sustainability, social sustainability. It's a massive redistribution of wealth against the poor people. And this is a challenge, a very serious challenge. Uh, this is a challenge for political leaders in the countries to be able to address uh, these type of questions. Uh, Ukraine is a very good example of this. Today there is a very high rate of inflation and reforms uh, should still be on the agenda. May, may I finish quickly on that presentation? Simply to say that, yes, there's a lot to do to improve the condition of living of people. Uh, it's not the end of history. Uh, there are challenges and we bring challenges to them and we have to be very careful about this. At the same time, this is a massive opportunity uh, for, for companies. But I would like to mention two points uh, for you to understand well what I mean by sustainability. There are opportunities for investment. This is a region in which you need to invest. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for all of us. Provided we keep in mind two points. The first one is having a share a fair share of the upside of the activity of the business. I will not be long on this, but you understand what I mean. This is no longer a time in which you can go make big profit and run away. You must be committed, and committed in the medium term. But when you are committed in the medium term, working with good partners, it does bring high return on investment. And uh, the fairness in the way to share upside can be based only on creativity and innovation by business people. You do, don't do business in Russia, Ukraine, or Poland the way you could have done 15 years ago. I will not give examples. I know many companies, including in Nordic countries, which have had to rethink the way they do business because this is a more mature region, more mature countries, and they understand better what can be done and what should be done. So sustainability must be based on medium-term fairness and transparency and clear understanding of this. The second point which is important for me is reciprocity. We begin, the paradigm is changing. Before we're speaking about investing into the region, I do continue to do it. But we need to look also at the opposite side. 
the region begins to invest into Western companies. And reciprocity and the uh, capacity to agree on reciprocity, to be clear about the principles, about governance, about transparency, is key for the medium term sustainability and understanding of what's happening. So the landscape is changing very quickly. There are good bases for sustainable growth, partnership, business, opportunities, provided we have a clear understanding of these mutual expectations. Once I've said this, there are sectors which are highly related to uh, what we speak about today, which is uh, sustainable growth. The first one is energy. This region is energy rich, exporter of energy, but also energy hungry. And we cannot say to them, no, please stop. Why should they? They say, you have based your own growth on the high consumption of energy. Why should we be careful about this? Why should we pay for you? And this dialogue and political dialogue, you know, is absolutely crucial. <laughs> when I'm in London and when I speak about this, I speak about global warming. But when I speak in Moscow or in Kiev or in Astana about this type of questions, I mention two different arguments, energy security and competitiveness. And when you look at the energy question, you see that the three agendas are quite the same. Depends where you stand. But the main one is about competitivity and competitiveness of the economies in the eastern part of Europe. Today they are part of the global economy. Ukraine has joined WTO. Russia wants to diversify its economy and be a global partner and is a global partner not only for oil and gas and they want to produce for their own uh, consumption. And in order to do this, they must be competitive. And you understand that the main agenda in the region in which creativity is needed is energy efficiency. Uh, the region is spending a lot of energy per unit of GDP, uh, seven times more than in Western Europe. And there is a huge, huge effort to be done to save energy. And it works. And this is driven mainly by the private business. Private businesses are much aware of the need to be competitive. The largest loan we have financed last year in Russia is about energy efficiency in traditional activities like steel. It's clear that cement, steel, district, heating, all of this is a massive opportunity for business, technology, consultancy. There is a need. It is business driven. You don't need to go to the Kyoto Protocol to get massive results. Hopefully we can go also to the Kyoto Protocol in the future discussions. But nevertheless, the simple economic agenda is a massive driver of uh, energy, technology and progress with huge impact.